Welcome back. Well, the Red Cross says ethnic violence in Kyrgyzstan has led to her humanitarian catastrophe. Some 80,000 Uzbeks have fled the country after days of clashes with Kyrgyz. Over the past several days, more than 100 people have been killed and hundreds more wounded. Russia has refused Kyrgyzstan's request for peacekeepers, but Moscow says it will help. Matthew Chance has more on Russia's role. They're going ahead and sending humanitarian supplies for the, for the, for the internally displaced people, the refugees, um, uh, to try and make sure they've got food and water and, and can be assisted on the ground in southern Kyrgyzstan. But they're not agreeing to send peacekeepers. What they are doing is apparently sending a battalion of paratroopers uh, to a, a Russian military base uh, inside Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan is a strategically important uh, country for the very good reason that both the United States and Russia have military installations there that are crucial to their presence in Central Asia. So Russia is sending armed reinforcements, paratroopers, to look, at, to look after its military facilities. But it's making it very clear at this stage that those paratroopers are not going to be there uh, to try and impose some kind of calm on the streets of, of southern Kyrgyzstan. So what is fueling this violence? Well, for some perspective, I talked with Peter Zalmayev, the director of the Eurasia Democracy Initiative. Listen. Let me just take you back uh, 20 years ago into 1990, um, during the waning days of the former Soviet Union, uh, just as a similar um, violence occurred between these two groups, the ethnic Uzbeks and uh, Kyrgyz, who uh, were fighting over uh, redistribution of uh, property and uh, land rights. Uh, uh, several hundred uh, were killed uh, during those events. Um, since then, not much has changed. Uzbeks, ethnic Uzbeks, uh, are um, severely underrepresented both in the central and local governments. Uh, the Uzbek language uh, is still to attain the level uh, or the status of the official language. Scores of Uzbek language publications and um, uh, schools have been closed down. So there's that resentment. On the other hand, on the part of the Kyrgyz population, there's been this traditional fear of uh, ethnic Uzbeks uh, living in the south of the country as the veritable fifth column for Uzbekistan. Uh, the fear is that Uzbekistan will eventually invade to grab the land uh, to secure uh, water resources uh, since it uh, lacks sufficient resources of its own. So, so given that, uh, from the sound of that, is there a solution here? Is, is it possible this could be solved? Uh, can they work this out between them or do they need outside help? Well, uh, the uh, head of the interim uh, government in Bishkek, uh, Rosa Otumbayeva, uh, was desperate enough to have uh, contacted the uh, Russian president directly and spoken with him, requesting uh, this, uh, that, that Russia send its uh, military paratroopers to help quell the violence. Uh, I believe that the government, uh, the current government of Bishkek, uh, in Bishkek, opened a veritable Pandora's box back two, uh, two months ago uh, after the coup which um, uh, overthrew the uh, former president by Kiev uh, and since then it has dismantled uh, its uh, existing security apparatus and even its um, uh, diplomatic corps to the point where it finds itself now unable to either quell the violence of its, on its own and restore order uh, or even to communicate its needs to the outside world directly. Um, and you mentioned Russia, I mean they're, Russia's sending paratroopers but they're really only interested in protecting their own military facilities, they're not going to get involved in this. I'm afraid so. I'm afraid Russia uh, or Uzbekistan or any other powers, any other surrounding uh, countries are very reluctant to get involved in this, uh, in, this uh, in this mess. And I suspect that this still has a few days to play out until uh, the Kyrgyz themselves uh, solve this issue.